How's it going everyone? In this video we're going to be covering 5 cool f-string formatting tricks that you can use in Python. So let's get started immediately with the first trick. And in this example I'm going to create an integer called n and that's going to be some huge number. Now at this point this is quite illegible. So by now you probably know that you can already insert underscores to make them slightly more readable and that this will be ignored by the interpreter, which means that if we were to print n, we would get this huge number back without the underscores. It's only there for the developer so they can understand the number much better. But obviously some of you might be on team scientific notation, so you might opt in to do this instead, although that returns a float, so we'd have to do that. Anyway, let's go back a step and remove these underscores. So instead of printing n the way it is, we're going to turn this into a f string and use the curly braces as always. Then we're going to insert our number and add an underscore after the colon. And this will give us the same result as from earlier. It's going to work as a thousands separator. And that can make it much easier to read big numbers. And you also have the option to do this using the comma. So it's going to give us the exact same result except with commas being used as the thousand separator. And unfortunately, these are the only two separators we can use in Python. If you want to use a different separator, you're going to have to define your own custom functionality. Party trick number two. Imagine you have a variable, and I'm going to be quite creative here and call this variable, which will be of type string, and that you want to align this text in a certain way when you print it. Well, to achieve this, we're going to use an f string once again, insert our variable, and then use the right arrow to right align the text. And in this example, I'm going to make this variable consume 20 characters of space. So at the moment, this consumes three characters of space, which means if we have 20 characters of space, this is going to insert 17 spaces before the variable. So when we run this, we're going to have the variable pushed all the way to the right of these 20 spaces. By default, we have the left alignment. So there's not much purpose in doing this other than giving that some space because with that you can also add, let's say a colon after and it will always be maintained in the same spot. Or actually now that I think about it, since it's the default, you don't even have to add that left arrow. You can remove it completely and you will still get 20 spaces. Otherwise, you can also center align this by using the up arrow now, if we run that, you'll see that the variable will be placed perfectly in the center, just as we told it to do so right here. But the fun doesn't stop there. We can also specify a fill element. So maybe for the first one, we want to fill the empty spaces with an underscore. And the second one will take the hash symbol and the bottom one will take a pipeline. Now, when we run this again, we're going to get this crazy output. Instead of just having empty spaces, we're going to have the character that we selected filling that empty space. Trick number three. For this example, I'm going to import date time from date time, and I'm going to get the current date and time. So now of type date time is going to equal date time dot now. And Python's pointing out that I'm high or something because I imported from date time from date time, but what I really wanted to do was from date time import date time. Anyway, once again, we're going to use the magic f string syntax and pass in that date and time. Now with date time, we can also provide date format specifiers such as percent day, percent month, and percent year. And it will format our date time into this format. As you can see in the console, it's the 9th of February in the year of 24. We can also use other ones such as 24 hour format followed by the minute and the second, and it will format it the way we describe it. We can also get the local version of our date and time by using percent %c, and it will end up giving us our local version of the date and time. Otherwise, if you like the AM PM format, you can do something like this. You can use percent uppercase I and percent %p, and that will give us first the 12 hour format, followed by p.m. and a.m. Right now here, it's 10 a.m. And if you want to learn more about this syntax, 
Just do a quick Google search on date time format specifiers and you'll see all the crazy syntax that allows you to play around with your date and time. This video was sponsored by me. On top of creating tutorials for YouTube, I also create professional courses for learning Python. This month, there's a Valentine's sale. So in case you're looking to master the Python language, learn data analysis, or build some real life projects, make your way to Indently.io, select the project and tap on start learning. The discount is automatically going to be applied at checkout. And on top of that, you have 30 days to decide whether the course is right for you or not. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Super crazy tip number four. Sometimes you're going to end up with some crazy numbers such as 1234.5678. And if you print this number, it's going to end up like this in the console. In many cases, you might not care about all these decimals. And sometimes you even get much, much longer decimals that you will surely want to shorten because it's insignificant information that you don't really care about in most cases. So of course, one thing you can do is round it to the amount of decimal places you want, and that will work perfectly fine. But we also have the option to achieve the same thing with F strings. So here we'll pass in the number followed by point to F, which tells Python that we should format this to two decimal places, or we should round it to two decimal places. So it will give us the same result except in an F string, which means we can also do things such as add some extra text and the result will equal this result over here. Now we can also duplicate this and change this to point zero F. And what that's going to do is completely remove the decimal from our result. And there's one thing that's really cool that you can do in combination with this syntax. And to show you, I'm going to duplicate that, change this to 3F. And here I'm going to insert a comma in front of the dot. And that's going to use the thousand separator in combination with the rounding. So you can use those in combination if you really want to take formatting those numbers to the next level. And finally, for trick number five, which is probably my favorite f-string formatting trick, I'm going to show you a very quick way to debug your code using f-strings. So here we can have a, which is an integer of five, and b, which is an integer of 10. Then we're also going to have a variable of type string, which will equal Bob says hi. And to start off, we're going to try to find out what the sum of a plus b is while showing the user that we are adding a to b. So a plus b equals a plus b. Right now, if we were to run this, we would get this as an output, which is quite descriptive. It tells us exactly the operation that we performed to get that result. But this took a lot of effort and energy. And as a professional Python developer, I don't want to write six extra characters. I'm just joking, of course. So let's look at that incredibly convenient sugar syntax that gives us the exact same result. And this is actually quite cool. All you have to do is remove this section here and inside the curly brackets, add an equal sign. This space between the equals will be maintained, which means if we were to run this, we're going to get a plus b equals 15. So anything in front of the equals will maintain its dignity by staying exactly the way you see it. And in general, you'll see people using it like this without any spaces. Personally, I absolutely hate that approach because it's quite combined and makes it quite illegible. So what I like to do is add some spaces around it. But your code editor is going to complain, so you need to pick your poison. But really, the cool thing about this is that no matter what operation you perform, such as trying to convert A to a Boolean, it's going to maintain the representation of that operation and give us the output. And the same thing will go for my variable. If we were to print this, it's going to say that my var is equal to this string. Otherwise, you need to go through the pain of actually manually typing that. So my var equals my var. And that's cool and all, but maybe someday you're going to change this variable name. And that means that, of course, you need to change all the occurrences of where you hard coded it. Anyway, those were my five favorite F string formatting tricks. F strings are a lot of fun and I play around with them all the time. So I definitely recommend you memorize a few of these because they can really help increase the efficiency of your workflow. But yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. So as always, 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.